Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? We are halfway through the week. I know. Well, it's no, Wednesday. it's Thursday for them. Yeah, it is. Wednesday evening for us. We're about to head to Bible study. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I'm really liking the, the comments you guys are, are giving. Yep. Um, I'm glad we did a series, you know, just kind of something that popped in our head a couple of weeks ago. And, and hoping hoping that it would be something that, that would help you, you know, because that's what these videos are about is, is building you up. It's equipping the saints, and you're the saints, equipping you, you know, to to be able to strengthen you and the things of God and stuff. So I'm, I'm really happy with um, the comments we're getting. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah. And to see everybody is, um, is actually doing the love letters mm -hmm. and... You know, taking the time to to hear God's God's voice. Yeah, and it's beautiful the responses that we're reading. Yeah, yeah. So, um, because we we do have to get going to Bible study, I just want to just just dive right into this thing. Um, you know, so we've already talked about the spontaneous voice of God that He comes as a spontaneous voice that lights up in our heart. That's mm -hmm. that's key number one. Key number two is to quiet yourself. That was yesterday's video. To quiet or still yourself. You know, the scripture says, be still and know that I am the Lord. To quiet yourself. We talked about that. The third key we're going to talk about is vision. That's what mm -hmm. we're going to talk about today. And the fourth one tomorrow, the last one of the series, will be uh, journaling. Okay. You know, so um, I wanted to start off with the verse, uh, Acts 2.17. And in Acts 2.17, it says this, and there's a few verses, so I'm just going to kind of just jump right in and, okay. and read them. Uh, Acts 2.17 says this, right? That Jesus had already ascended to heaven, and Peter stands boldly. And actually, it's verse 17, but I'm going to start at 14, so we're in context. It says, but Peter standing up with the eleven raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judah and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, because basically the Holy Spirit fell, they began to speak in tongues. And um, so he's like, hey, we're not drunk. And then he quotes the Old Testament. He says, but this is what was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And this is the verse I want to get to. This is a prophecy that Joel said about what was going to happen. And he said, basically saying that this is happening now. And this is it. It goes, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Remember, that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about today. Mm -hmm. It's visions. And, um, and your old men shall dream dreams. So that's a, a scripture that it was prophesied that when the Holy Spirit would come that we would receive visions, okay? Uh, and Habakkuk, the Old Testament, I want to read another verse. I don't have these marked guys, so I'm just um, scrolling my Bible to get to them. Habakkuk is a small book, so I got to be real careful when looking for it here. And I'm probably going to... Oh, there. Oh, okay. Habakkuk what? Um, chapter 2, verses 1 and 3. Okay. Okay. Um, the prophet Habakkuk. Check this out. Chapter 2, verse 1 and three, one through 3. It says this. This is what Habakkuk says. He goes, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. And I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Verse 2. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end of it, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. 
it will not tarry. So this prophet is, is basically saying, he goes, I'm going to stand my watch. I'm going to stay still. Yeah. That's what we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. He goes, and I'm, I love this. Listen, I think it's interesting. He goes, and I'm going to watch to see what he will say to me. So normally it would be like, I'm going to listen to what he has to say to me. But notice what he said. He goes, I'm going to watch to see what he's going to say to me. In the message, it says, write it out in big block letters so mm -hmm. that it can be read on the run. Yeah. He says, write the vision. So remember, we're talking about vision. So I'm showing you scripturally how it's talking about vision. That he says that the time will come when the Holy Spirit will come and he will give visions and dreams. Mm -hmm. We see here that Habakkuk, you know, that God told him, write what you see. Yeah. You know, write it down. Uh, so here's the thing, though, right? In, in our westernized civilization, um, we are trained to live out of our head instead of out of our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it, it's like we were talking about, like, the only time we reward that is kindergartners. Yeah. You know, color, learn to color, learn to paint, learn all these things and activities. Once first grade comes, the activities are slowly taken away that by the time you're a few grades in, Everything is analytical. Everything is in the head. Nothing is in the and heart. And they've taken that away a lot from the schools. Now yeah. they, they've taken music out. They've yeah. taken well, a the lot first, of those creative The first thing out. that goes in budget is anything creative. Yeah. Yeah, the music program. I remember growing up to, you know, they having woodwork, they mm -hmm. having um, any type of... Yeah. any type of creative type of subject we used to have it all yeah it's gone and, and, and some schools taken them some schools still have away. music some don't they Private just completely schools. take it away you know charter schools some charter schools when i was a kid almost every kid had an instrument that they learned how to play yeah you know they all carry their they instrument they used to even have art class yeah 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 so we're, we're trained to live out of our head and and so the here's so it's not our fault that it's hard for us to 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 tap into this, what, what we're mm -hmm. teaching you here, because it's been stomped out of you all your life since you were a child. Yeah. So now it's really hard. Like, I don't think we would have a hard time teaching this to somebody in the Middle East. Yeah. Because everything is vision. Everything is heart. Everything is intuition. Everything is, is, is those things. And they have to be creative in order to survive. Yeah. 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 So... This, is, this whole thing is about training ourselves to get out of our heads and live in our hearts, you know? So it's like in John 5, 19, 20, it says this. John 5, 19, 20. Um, it says, now this is, this is Jesus talking now, right? This is interesting. It says, Jesus answered and said to them, he says, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself for what he sees the father do for whatever he does. The son also does in like manner. So even Jesus says, I don't do anything unless I see him do, see it, him do it. Then I do it. Yeah. You know, so Guys, this is this is unlocking a key that is there. It's it's been there in plain sight, you know, and, and it's right there. And um, verse twenty, it says, "For the Father loves the Son, and shows him all things that he himself does, and he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel." So he says, "Man, the Father loves me." He was, and that's why he shows me what to do. Mm -hmm. So what was Jesus doing? He was tuning to vision. Yeah. He's like, he, notice he says, he was, I don't hear what the Father's saying. He was, I see what the Father's I see doing. What he's doing. And he's saying, lead by example. Yeah, exactly. So we have been talking about the ears of our heart. You kind of laughed because you pictured a heart having little ears mm -hmm. yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, and we've mentioned the eyes and ears of our heart, but we keep talking about the ears, right? Tuning to flow, tuning to spontaneous thought, hearing that. But today, now we want to talk about the eyes of your heart. To open up the eyes of your heart and check this out, biblical, biblical, Ephesians. Because remember, we're talking about being relevant. Being relevant means nothing if it's not scriptural. If it is not in the scriptures doesn't matter you know uh, Ephesians chapter 1 mm -hmm. verse 17 and 18 check this out 
And you might have to watch this video a couple of times or get a notepad and write these verses down so you can read them yourself. You had to kick it. Huh? I had to kick it. <laughs> it's tradition now? <laughs> Let me move it back. Okay. Uh, 17 and 18. This is what Paul says. He says that the, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, no, I'm sorry, that, yeah, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. This is a prayer. This is a prayer that Paul is praying to the Ephesians. He says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance, his, his inheritance in the saints. And 20, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. Now, this is what I want to talk about. Look what he says in the end of 17. He says, May God give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the, lo- in the knowledge of him, right? His, his, his prayer, right, is that God gives them a spirit, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the eyes of understanding. See, these eyes aren't understanding. It's the eyes of our heart. Yeah. That's what's understanding is the eyes of our heart. Um, so we can see, you know, just through these few scriptures, there's so many more guys that, but these are the three main main ones that really jumped out. Um, it's, it's, I believe that it's extremely important to think in terms of image in the Christian life, Mm -hmm. reading through the Bible. Jesus himself says, I visualize what the father's doing. Paul says to be enlightened by the eyes of understanding. Habakkuk said, I'm going to see and write this down. Uh, we can see throughout Scripture the whole time that it is really important to have vision. Yeah. Would you say that was? Absolutely. So I think a lot of Christianity operates without vision. There's, there's, there's a problem because I run into so many people that, that are so broken Yet they've been serving God for a long time. Mm-hmm. They're back and forth between the world and serving God. They're constantly stumbling. And I'm not saying we're all perfect, but I'm saying when you completely stumble back into the world and then back into the Lord and back into the world, back into the Lord, something's got to change. Well, because our visions are not clear. Exactly. There's no vision. I think this is a huge part. This whole lesson that we're talking about is hearing God's voice. First of all, I think this is so important that if you don't learn this, I think anything you learn after is is going to be like halfway, um, I don't know, like the word I'm trying to say, but I think, I think, you know, that big movie that everybody was kind of, um, Making a big deal about bird box, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. To me, not these things may not seem essential to many, but to me, not knowing how to hear God's voice mm-hmm. or understanding or having the vision or knowing how to quiet yourself or not having any of these things in your life or, or being able to apply any of this is almost like having that blindfold that blindfold on you like that movie and living life like that yeah that's that's what that's a good example yeah you know that's the way me personally and that's my opinion because you know as you've been talking about this the last few days i've been really really thinking about that and that's good. to me i thought about that movie and i was like it almost feels like bird box. It almost mm-hmm. feels like having that blindfold. And that's how my life would be if I didn't have all of this in my life. Mm-hmm. Because you you need to have, this is part of essential daily life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's almost like part of the air you breathe. Yeah. You know, and how can you go through life without God? And God speaks to you every day. You have to quiet yourself every day and you have to have a vision every day in order. It's like it's a renewing of the mind and, you know, every day. And you can't function 
daily. Remember how much she struggled in that movie because she had to be blindfolded? Yeah. Every, even the simplest of things was a struggle. Everything. So what do you think happens if we're blind in the spirit? What do yeah. you think happens if we don't have vision? We, you keep stumbling. You keep falling. Mm -hmm. You stumble. Exactly. You fall. You, you, exactly. It's a continuous every single time. Yeah. And you can only get hurt so many times. You know, when I... When I was on the bike with David, and and this and it's it, I'm in a I'm gonna say that I laughed about it at the beginning many times, you guys, and I will say that I laughed every single time at the beginning that I would fall, and at the beginning it was funny because I'd be like, oh, I'm such a klutz, you know, and I would get on the bike and I'd fall and I'd get back up, but it didn't become funny now that I'm feeling the repercussions of my fall because. You know, there's injuries on my body mm -hmm. now that I'm feeling from all a lot of those falls. And, you know, and it's the same thing. Once you stumble and you fall so many times, you start to feel the repercussions of every fall. Mm -hmm. And you can only fall so many times without feeling the pain and feeling the repercussions of it. And you become injured. So and it catches some, up to you. It catches up to you. And there's, there's going to be a time that you're going to fall and you may not get up. Well, that makes me think of a lot of times there's believers that, that just completely go back to the world, back to the Lord, back to... And, and here's the thing, if that is you, then let this be the last time that happens. Yeah. Because exactly what I'm hearing what Sharon is saying is that, yeah, every time she's gotten up, but each time it's injured her body more and more and more. So it's like, if, if you probably notice that every time you come back to the Lord after stumbling, you're a little weaker now. Yeah. It, it could, because it breaks you down, you know, so. And it's been, and it's become harder for me to get on, uh, back on the bike, has it not? Yeah. How long has it been since I've ridden yeah, with you? I don't know. It's quite some time and it's yeah. gotten a little bit harder and harder, but I try to get back out there, you know, and everything, but it does get harder for me. And you know um but we got to get back up you guys yeah. and you got to keep moving forward so don't don't allow repercussions keep you down you got to get back up and you got to let it be the last time stop falling yeah so um what, what were we talking about though what, what led us down that path um oh we were talking about um about vision, about uh, oh, the blindfold. Oh, the blindfold and, of, of and, basically yes. without living a Christian life without vision, it, it's going to cause you to stumble. So this is a good thing. If that, this is you that have stumbled in your walk, it's a good thing you're watching this video now. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So um, maturity in Christ is, is this. It's using your logical and your visionary to be used by the Holy Spirit. Because we've built all our life from kindergarten it's crushed our creativity, crushed our vision, mm -hmm. but we've raised up our, our logical thinking. So now we have to let it catch up. The logical, you mean the analytical? Yeah, analytical, analytical. logical. We, mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that because without an analytical mind, we wouldn't have doctors and scientists mm -hmm. and there's uh, engineers and you know, people like that. So that's a good thing. Problem is your visual, your spirit is... is is weak. It's being suppressed. It's down. Yeah. yeah. So it's about raising. The, this is what this this these videos are about. Is bringing. It's not about dumbing you down. It's allowing your spirit to be equal and catch up. Balancing and all, it out. Yeah. E exactly. You know. So, um, I wrote down a couple um, different kinds of vision. A couple different kinds. One is a spontaneous vision. You know how the key number one was spontaneous voice. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that a spontaneous voice, like boom, you know. It, a word pops in, in your heart, and, and that's the Lord speaking. Well, now, one of the definitions of vision is spontaneous vision. All of a sudden, you maybe you didn't hear somebody's name, but you saw somebody, somebody you know, or something happened, or situation. That is God giving you a spontaneous vision. It just happens. Bam. Uh, another one is, is spontaneous vision in prayer. Mm. Have you ever been praying, and, and, and you're praying, and all of a sudden... Something you weren't intending to pray for popped in your head. You saw it. That's a spontaneous vision that God says, boom, here. You know, and, and you know now what direction to pray about. Um, 
another one would be um, a vision outside of yourself. Um, like, uh, remember that cool story in the Old Testament where um, the prophet was surrounded by an army and his servant was scared? And the servant, mm -hmm. and the servant goes, we just talked about it, and the servant goes, you know, Master, Master, they've surrounded us. And the prophet wakes up and looks around, sees himself surrounded by armies, and he goes, Lord, let him see what I see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it says, yeah, and, and his that. eyes were opened, and there was chariots, an chariots army of that, chariots yes, everywhere. that were many more than mm -hmm. that army. Yeah. He goes, let Lord open his eyes to see that, that there are more of us than there is of them. Yes, yes. So that's another vision, even though that doesn't happen a lot, but it, it is a definition in the Bible of, of a vision that's outside of ourselves. Um, uh, dreams in the Bible by God have been mentioned 50 times in the Bible. Yeah, there's so many. 50 times. Yeah. And um, this, I came upon this verse, Numbers 12, 6. Okay, Numbers. It's in the Old Testament, way, way in the beginning. And I'm going to read it. And check this out. He says, then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face. But anyways, my, my point is, remember what prophecy, prophet, prophecy means? It means bubble up. Remember? Mm-hmm. So if we're receiving a revelation from God, a word from God, it's bubbling up inside of us. God says here, this is how I make myself known to my prophets or to those that bubble up my word. I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. In visions. God says that. And I speak to him in a dream. So... Um, I think that that's key. I think we've hit enough scriptures to show that this ain't just talk. This ain't coming out of just our own our own understanding. Scripture mm -hmm. has said it over and over: dreams and visions. God said He speaks to us in visions. So now here's the problem: is many of us um, struggle to have vision. We 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 struggle with it, and I just want to say like this, right? Is is my instructor <laughs> taught me. I learned this stuff in Bible college, uh, but basically he said in, in the textbook that he wrote that um, the eyes of your heart, uh, if we never used them before, then they're going to be weak. Like somebody that breaks a leg and they have to be sitting down for a couple months, they have lost, lost strength in that leg or they've lost strength in that arm, or they've lost strength because if you don't use a muscle, um, you lose functionality of it. Yeah. So don't freak out if, you, if it's hard for you to hear the voice of God, or it's hard for you to, to let the flow of vision come, because you have, if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you have the Holy Spirit in you, your heart has eyes because he says that he will take out your heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh. The heart that God puts has ears and eyes to be able to see. Well, there's a song that says, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. 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 Open the eyes of my heart, yeah. Lord. I want to see you. Man, I forgot about it. We used yeah. to sing that in prison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying yeah to singing it in prison, but... Yeah, actually, we used to love that song. We used yeah. to, I was the sound guy. Did I ever tell you that? Yeah, eyes of my heart, Lord. Did I ever tell you? Mm -mm. Yeah, I was the sound guy at the chapel there at, at Terminal Island. Yeah, it's um, a beautiful song. Yeah, so if you're having trouble with this, um, remember, you have to re-strengthen it. This has been crushed out of you since kindergarten, guys. So you have to... You know, you know what just came to my mind? Because mm. I keep saying kindergarten. Somebody might say, what, we're not kids. Actually, we are. We are. Because Jesus says, unless you come to me as, as children, a child. As a child, you yeah. cannot even see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Bam, that ties into this. Yeah. He goes, man, you want to see? You want to see the things of God? Then become a child. Yeah. You know, so um, that wasn't on my notes. <laughs> it just <laughs> popped in my head right now. Um, so, guys, um, if you are struggling or anybody watching this, just take a second and, and ask God. 
Because Jesus says, if you ask me for a fish, I'm not going to give you a stone. You know, if you ask me for, for something to eat, I'm not going to give you a snake. He's in it. Ask him to open up your yeah. eyes. Yeah, and just, just stop this video for a second. Say, Lord, please open the eyes of my heart. Because you said that you would you came to give vision to the blind. Yeah. You know, uh, you came to give sight to the blind, actually, is what he said specifically. So, um, yeah, just ask God and say, open my eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes yeah. of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Yeah. Yeah, throw on that song. That's what it's called. Yeah. Open the eyes of my heart. So, um, why is vision so important, right? What would we rather do, listen to a story on a radio or watch a movie on it? We watch movies. What, what's more popular? Watching movies. Why, do, why, do, why are movies blockbuster hits? Because people like to see. They like to see things. Yeah. Well, you know how many, like, I love reading books, guys, but so many people won't read a book, but they'll go watch the movie out of the book. Why? Because they want to visually see it. Even so. though sometimes the books are better, though. Oh, the book is always the better. It's always better. But it's fun to visualize. Yeah. Did you know I had that book, um, Ready Player One? I read that book. Yeah, I bet you it was so much better. Yeah, it was way different. Yeah. It was more, way more deeper. But anyways, it, it's fun to watch a movie. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. You but, can imagine and you can, you know. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard a speaker speak? It doesn't even have to be a Christian thing. But if they if they give you visual visualizations in the way that they're talking and, or their lecture or whatever, doesn't it make, make it more impactful? Yeah, it does. It does, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, Especially when you replay it a few times, too, and you go back and you're able to visualize yeah. it and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like your, your company thing, when I heard the, the CEO, mm-hmm. and he's talking about his childhood, and, and where's he from, from Iran? Mm-hmm. From Iran? Yeah. And as a Christian, and they, you know, they, had a, uh, they had a flea from there because they were killing the Christians, and just, I, was, I, I started visualizing that stuff, you know, and it was, he was a good speaker. Uh, you know, and um, because they bring you into vivid stories. Why am I saying that? Is because God wants to speak to us in a way that He made us to understand. Yeah. Jesus was the greatest preacher ever, and all He gave was vivid stories. Have you noticed that? Yeah. He's, he'd be like, oh, yeah, there was a woman looking for a coin. And, you know, just like everything was visual in the way Jesus spoke. And so simple. He, yeah. It was just simplicity, mm-hmm. simplicity and humble. But it, it has such a huge impact. Oh, yeah. Yeah, such a huge impact. And sometimes that's all it needs is simplicity, you know? Yeah. Sometimes we um, want to over-explain things. We want to over-complicate and over-explain things, and we don't need to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, some suggestions to somebody that maybe you're watching this and you're, you're like, man, I'm really struggling with this one. Like, Okay, guys, I, I get the spontaneous voice. I get quieting myself, but this vision thing is way over my head. You know, I want to talk to those people that are struggling with that. And it's not your fault. Like I said, we've been taught to crush that thing in us since we were kids. So, number one, a good suggestion is again, be still. Be still and allow something to flow. Yeah. You know, just allow that thing to flow. Another good one is to enter a biblical story. Like, start like, okay, open the Bible and visualize what you're reading. Yeah. You know, like, it could be anything. It could be in the Old Testament. It could be in the New Testament. Whatever it is, begin to say, Lord, I want to see this. You know, and it'll say something like, you know, Jesus was by the beach, and he went out on the boat and began to teach. And it's like, what do you see? Yeah. You know, what do you see? Do you see the water? Do you see the beach? Do you see the multitudes of people? You know, can you hear the birds, the seagulls above flapping, the, 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 the water slowly crashing on the beach, and you just hear the water? You know, just little things like that. Or just even take it further. Why don't you just read the Bible? Yeah. You know, it, 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 there's so many amazing... Everywhere. Just so many amazing stories from the beginning. I remember just... You know, at the beginning, I didn't even really truly realize, even when I read the stories in Judges, and I was like, oh my God, there's so many, so many stories even in there, and and they were horrific, and some of them were just like tragic, and I didn't understand them, and I remember I came to you after a long time, and I said, because I had read the whole Bible, and I was like, well, David, 
you know, there was this horrific story in there and about the concubine and, and the Levite and, and why did this have to take place? Da, 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 da. But you gave me a better understanding to it, yeah. you know, and then I had to go back and reread it. And there's so many things that if you go back and and reread things and you, you begin to understand the genealogy of things and why mm-hmm. things really truly had to happen. And then you start to read things and you understand that a lot of the things that took place back then, you kind of see them even happening, yeah. how even laws are even happening to now. Yeah. Things exist then yeah. are taking place now. Yeah. We just don't see it because we don't read yeah. it. But I mean, we're saying suggestions on people that are struggling to visualize. Well, so I that's think what they'll I'm visualize if they go yeah. in and they start reading. You know, yeah, like, any, any, That's what I said, yeah, anywhere in the Bible. Anywhere. You just, you just start learning so much and, and reading the stories and it's just... It's a beautiful, to me, that's a beautiful um, love letter in itself, you know, yeah. that, that God has put for us there, yeah. you know. Another way is, um, I, I, I was surprised by this, but a lot of times I, I didn't know, but there's some people that pray and you don't visualize anything. All you see is the back of your eyelids. Um, start to actually try to visualize what you're praying for and what you're praying about. You know, the um, person you're praying about. Yeah, anything yeah. to to exercise the eyes of your heart. These are suggestions for people that are struggling with vision on how to exercise. You know, to allow that flow. Even if you read a biblical story, start to try to visualize it. Try to see it happen. Try to see. Put yourself there. What does it smell like? What does it taste like? What you know? That's good. Uh, um, visualize your prayers. You know, there's something that I, that I've done ever since I learned this. Um, it, it's it's when I want to talk to him, like seriously talk to him. Like there's times I just talk to him all day long, but when I want like some serious business with Jesus, I enter into the throne room, and I literally picture this huge throne and him. Sta- it's it's the same throne every single time. It's the same thing every time, and um, that's how I'm able to visualize. So it's not just some prayer where my eyes are closed and I'm seeing the back of my eyelids. I'm literally on my knees at the throne of God. Amen. And that helps me mm-hmm. because then it helps me to tune to flow. And then I get to hear what he says back to me. Um, another little helper is um, if, if you tend to dream things a lot that, are of, that you know are of God, buy a journal, put it by your bed, write it down the moment you wake up. If you wake up in the middle of the night, just jot it down real quick, you know, jot some things down. Do you remember, do you remember the other day when um, I had a dream? And I had told you that I had a dream that I was marking myself oh, yeah. with a marker. Mm-hmm. I had a dream. Yeah. yeah, I had a dream that I was uh, marking myself with a marker along my left side of my hip. And it, it was funny because that, that day I was putting circles on my hip. And I had been feeling discomfort on my hip for months, right? For months, months. And that same day, we had a doctor appointment at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And we did go to my doctor, and when my doctor pushed down in that area, mm-hmm. she felt something, and they, there was a lump there. She says, when you go see the specialist, I want you to get a marker, and I want you to mark, draw circles, and I want you to draw X's on that area. And yeah. I just looked at David, and she, she called him up, and she says, do you want to feel where those are at? And I looked at David, and I said... I just looked at him with amazed and I said, this is just confirmation because I had mm-hmm. told him that morning about my dream. And I said, I had a dream that I was marking myself with circles and putting X's. And I had shared that with him that morning. And that afternoon, the doctor was telling me to mark myself with X's and put circles on that area. So yeah. when we have dreams, you know, share them, you know, write them down like he's saying, you know, because they're... God sometime will let me know. And I had peace after that. I definitely had peace, you know, in my heart because I was like, it's not that God will sometimes, you know, give you or do something. He's just confirming that I'm with you. And that's how what I felt. I felt peace yeah. and confirmation that the Lord was with me through all of that. Uh, a, a last suggestion on if you're having struggle with seeing vision is listen to worship music and visualize the lyrics. Yeah. Visualize the things, the actual, don't just sing them or read the lyrics. Visualize it in your heart. Learn that song so you can close your eyes and begin to visualize what those worship yes, songs are saying. So just a, a recap of the suggestions. 
is be still and allow flow. Enter yourself into a biblical story so you can visualize it. Visualize yourself in prayer. Don't just see the back of your eyes, uh, uh, your back of your eyelids. Uh, write write down, down dreams and worship songs. These are ways to exercise. If you wanted to ask me how to build up your legs or your biceps or whatever, I would give you different exercises on how to build that. I am giving you exercises on how to build up your vision. Your vision. Um, so uh, another thing is, um, there's. remember how yesterday we talked about three voices? Mm -hmm. That there's our own voice, there's the enemy feeding thoughts into your brain, and then there's the Holy Spirit. So in the same thing, way we have an inner screen there's an inner screen in our heart like if you close your eyes and visualize something there's like a little screen there well there's not three voices there's three projectors mm. there's three projectors um daniel 4 13 we're almost getting to the end of this guy so i wanna um we're at 35 minutes but i i can't end it without showing you this daniel Is that ice cream guy just hanging out in our corner? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. I almost feel like a little kid. I remember remember Eugene and the ice cream? Who? Eugene, the little kid that was Who's running Eugene? for president in elementary school. Oh, oh me. Eugene, yeah. <laughs> that was the ice cream truck. <laughs> yeah. Daniel 4.13 4, says this. Look at this. Look at what Daniel said. He says... I saw the visions of my head while on my bed. Mm. So that's all I want. I didn't want to read the whole verse. But he, so Daniel, the prophet Daniel says, I saw the vision. So there's a screen inside of you that you see, you know. And um, so there's the projector from the Holy Spirit projecting thoughts. There's your own thoughts. And then the enemy can project thoughts. Why do you think they spend multi-million dollars on ads? Why do you think uh, pornography is so prevalent? Why do you think, like, especially where you're from, remember how, like, that's the porn capital? I could, remember I went down to, when I first met you, and I couldn't believe the billboards that were up? Yeah. Everything was sexual, everything that was crazy, but why is that? Because they, they know that if a man will see that, boom, that, that stays there. Yeah. And now they see that, that vision, that, that, because there's a one screen, there's three projectors, the Holy Spirit, your own, and the enemy. Yeah. You know, probably so, wondering where is she from? What's that? I'm from the San Fernando Valley, guys. Yeah, San Fernando Valley is in north of Los Angeles, and um, I just I was just surprised. It's kind of well, kind of in San Francisco, you see some very racy billboards too. Yeah, it's by yeah. Los Angeles. It's before Los Angeles. Yeah. So Jeremiah nine fourteen, check this out. Jeremiah nine fourteen says this, and this is how I'm going to show you that. Um, there's one screen but three projectors. There's the, what God is projecting in, in your screen or what you are projecting in your screen and what the enemy is projecting in your screen. Uh, Jeremiah 9, 14 says this. It says, But they have walked according to the dictates of their own hearts and after the bales which their father taught them. So in other words, they were walked according to the things that they see in their own hearts. If you go to Jeremiah 7.24, it says this. It says, Yet they, they did not obey or incline their ear, but followed the counsels and the dictates of their evil hearts and went backwards and not forward. So they were doing the things that were evil in their hearts. And finally, Psalm 62.3, um, it says this. Psalm 62.3. Actually, no. I, 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 no, I wrote the wrong one down. Anyways, we, we made the points on that. So, um, we always want to make sure that we tune to flow and we tune to vision of what God is throwing on that screen. You know? Because the enemy will, will throw some bad stuff in your mind, too. Yeah. You know? And you can't allow that to happen, guys. Um, so... Um, a good question to journal. Get your journal again, the one you wrote your love letter to Jesus, and do something like this. And ask Jesus a question and see what he says. Ask him, how important is it to use the eyes of my heart? 
Ask him, how important is it, Lord? The things that, that David is saying, the things that Sharon is saying, is that really important? Are the eyes of my heart important? Ask him, you know, ask him those things and, you know, and, and, and write down what he says. And, and see what he tells you. See what you hear. See what spontaneous flow. See what you see. See what you visualize. And, and God is going to begin to speak to you. And he's going to begin to show you. You know. And, and the last thing I want to say is this. Is on your journal. You can do this. Is I want you to picture yourself with Jesus. I remember the first time I really, really did this. Like, like wholeheartedly try. You writing that down, babe? Yeah, but what, it, what was it that you said? How important? How important is it to use the eyes of your heart? To use the eyes of my heart. Okay. Like you're asking him. You're asking Jesus, how important is it? And see what God gives you. Um, but I remember, you know, um, the, the college course basically said, picture yourself with Jesus. It doesn't matter. It could be where you're at. If you, if it helps you to visualize Jesus in your living room or wherever it is you're at, or put yourself in a Bible when he's having the Passover meal. And what if you're there? Yeah. You know, it, you know what's crazy is that all of a sudden that spontaneous vision takes over. And I remember I put myself in in um, in uh, when he does the the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. And I read the scripture, and it says there's a multitude of people, and he was preaching on this mount. So I closed my eyes, and I pictured myself there. And it was weird, because all of a sudden, I'm hearing him talk, and all of a sudden, everybody... What happened? Sorry. Earthquake hit? <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden, everyone disappeared, and it was just me and him. So it was just the weirdest... And this is after practicing this stuff, guys. I had to learn this stuff, too. So at first, it was like the Sermon on the Mount. And I'm just picturing myself there, and he's like, best blessed are those, all the blessed, you know what I mean, the Beatitudes and all that. And then all of a sudden, boom, everybody disappeared. And then he looks to me, and then he starts talking to me. It just completely, you know, so, guys, this, this will change your life, you know. So key number one, spontaneous voice. Key number two, quiet yourself. Key number three today is vision. I pray for your eyes of your heart to be open. Every single person that is watching this right now, I pray for your eyes of your heart to be open and to be open wide in the name of Jesus Christ. For the Holy Spirit to begin to give you vision, not only that, but voice in the name of Jesus. Yes. It doesn't matter where you're at. It doesn't matter YouTube or whatever. The Holy Spirit will go anywhere. Nothing can stop him. Yes. And I just pray for you to receive that vision and for this not to be something hard for you, for this just to be something that just boom, like a light switch that it opened in the name of Jesus in your heart right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, um, that's beautiful. One more key tomorrow, which is journaling, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. I'm excited about that. Yeah. All right, guys, we got to head to Bible study. God bless you. Make sure you watch the Bible study. Uh, that will also be uh, on our channel also. So uh, God bless you. Bye, guys. Bye.